good old Microsoft Paint. Didn't we all love it when we were like 11? Remember that pencil tool, those crooked lines that we drew, those shapes and characters that we made? Remember that bucket tool? You took this bucket tool, click inside a closed surface and then boom. No matter how intricate the edges were, the closed surface was filled. So I searched around on how this tool actually worked and as it turns out, it uses something known as the flood fill algorithm. And that's what this video is about. Now before we actually look at the algorithm, let's look at where this tool actually works. For this tool to work, you need a closed surface. Even if you had a gap of a single, yes, a single pixel, this tool wouldn't work. Like in this example, a gap of a single pixel, when I use the tool, it doesn't work. Now when I close that same gap of a single pixel and then use the bucket tool, it works. I guess that's why it's called flood fill. It floods the entire area and you have to contain the flood inside a closed surface. This is the actual algorithm. Don't worry, I'll make this super easy for you. This is a function. A function is nothing but a set of computer instructions that perform some tasks. But this is unlike other normal functions because this is a recursive function. A recursive function is a function that calls itself. So every time you run this function, it calls itself multiple times. In our case, one call to the flood fill function calls four other flood fill functions. Four flood fill functions call 16 and 16 of these functions call 64 others, giving rise to this massive chain reaction of flood fill functions being executed one after the other. Now let's talk about what each flood fill function is doing other than just calling itself. When you call a flood fill function, it remembers three things. The starting coordinates of the algorithm, the old color and the new color. Let's take this example. Here we have a box and we want to fill the box with black color. So first, let's look at this image from the perspective of pixels. And now we use that bucket tool at the middle pixel. I am using this symbol to represent the bucket fill algorithm. Remember, the algorithm starts here. Three things are stored at the memory here. The old color which is white, the new color which is black and the coordinates x, y where we use our bucket tool. Going back to the algorithm, our algorithm checks if the value of the pixel at the current coordinate is equal to the old color, which is white. If it is equal to the old color, then the algorithm changes the old color to new color. Hence, we change the value of the middle pixel from white to black. Now first part of the algorithm is over, which was pretty easy. And which was just converting the old color to the new color. Moving on to the next part, which is calling four other flood fill functions. One on the top pixel, one on the bottom, one on the right and one on the left. So yes, same two steps will be carried out on these four pixels too, which is to check if the pixel is white, turn that pixel to black and then move on to other four pixels. Now here is the interesting part. Once this chain reaction is started, it doesn't stop. It keeps on going on all four directions until a pixel is encountered which is specifically not white. So this chain reaction goes on until it hits the wall. Now even though the red wall appears to be thin in this illustration, it is also made up of pixels, which in our case is red. As soon as the algorithm hits the red wall, no new flood fill functions are called and the other older functions kind of die down after changing the pixel color from white to black. So this was the flood fill function in two parts. The first part checked if the current pixel was equal to old color and then converted it into the new color. The second part of the function called itself four times in the surrounding pixels. And that's how our flood fill function fills a closed surface. Now this is a fairly new YouTube channel and if you would like to support me to create content like this, sharing this video and subscribing to the channel would be highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you next time with another interesting idea or topic.